Hello there my fishy friends. My name is Peter and today is part one of an educational series that I'm planning on coho fishing. My aim with the series is to help people on the Vetter River improve their coho fishing game so that fewer people are likely to resort to flossing and snagging as a way of getting their fish. Notice the trend over the last few years that uh, makes me worry a bit for the future of this fishery. I want to keep things nice, so I'm going to do my part by trying to educate people a little bit on some better ways on, on how to fish for these fish and not only catch more fish, but do it in a better way. So, part one, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to talk about coho run timing. This is kind of a mystery to a lot of people, but I've spent the last nine years snorkeling this river and fishing this river and um, I've gotten a pretty darn good feel for what the fish are up to. So coho uh, spend a year as smolts in the river then they head out to the ocean for three years and then they come back and they enter the river over quite a span of time. On the better, you can encounter adult coho from August all the way until February. So there's like seven months where you could potentially catch a coho. But within the time span, there's quite a bit of variability about how many fish there are. So let's break it down month by month. When I'm snorkeling, I usually see the first coho about the third week in August. And at that point, there really aren't very many. There might be 40 or 50 coho in the entire river. It's really small numbers. I call those the outlier fish. Outlier fish meaning they're not part of the main group. And I think those fish are, in my opinion, genetically really important. Uh, because as the climate changes, it's those outlier fish that may well hold the genes that allow the fish to be more successful in the future. So these summer fish, these August fish, potentially are better adapted to warm water temperatures. and. For that reason, I, I think they're really quite important and more or less we should be leaving them alone because we might need them in the future, but anyway, this video isn't about that. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave the genetics for another topic day. Uh, today let's talk about the run. So in August there really are very few, 40, 50 in the entire river and there's actually so few that they school up with the large scale suckers. So you have these lines of large scale suckers on the river bottom. And the coho will just side up to them. Coho are a schooling fish. They really like being in groups. So, um, yeah, that's what they do that time of year. Uh, things start to pick up a little bit at the beginning of September. But personally, I don't really target coho in the first half of September. Definitely some people catch them. But when I'm snorkeling, they're still really sparse. Like, in September, they're, they start trickling in, but it's like 10 fish a day, 20 fish a day. It's very slow for the first half of September. And then all of a sudden, like mid-September, right about when I'm filming, they start to come in. The little waves, little schools of 20, 30, 50 will show up and travel up the river. And some days you get into them and it can really be quite special. You can get some really beautiful big coho in the first half of September. but have to get lucky. It's it's more than just skill. To to get a coho, I think you need some luck in the first half of September. Second half of September, the numbers start to pick up. At that point, we're getting like a hundred, maybe even two hundred new fish entering the river every day, and also they start to add up. Right, these fish, they spend one to two months in the river, just slowly as their bodies change and mature into spawning mode. So these fish, not only do we have new fish showing up all the time, the old fish are also in the river waiting and, and biding their time, conserving their energy for their final spawning run. So uh, between those two things, second half of September, it starts to get to a point where you know you, you can reliably, if you fish for a week, chances are you'll get one or two coho if you know what you're doing. Uh, I generally don't catch my first coho until probably September 20th or so, somewhere around there is, is when I typically get into my first one. 
This year I'm filming on, this is the 14th, and I've had one on, I haven't landed one yet, so yeah, it can happen. You just have to be optimistic. Where, it, where things really start to change is in October, so the peak of our coho run is mid-October. On the better, the, the middle two weeks in October are really when it's all happening. If you only have time for a couple of weekends on the better, make them the middle of October because that's when the coho really come in in strong numbers. And strong numbers, I mean like one to 2,000 new fish showing up in the river every single day. And um, those numbers are huge. That, we're talking like 100 fish per hour swimming up river and, and the numbers, it can be really impressive, especially after it rains, when, when a bunch of extra fish come in. It, it uh, really makes for a, a spectacle. When I was snorkeling in the river and all these fish are going by, it's, it's really quite special. And when you're fishing, if the water is clear, you stand on a rock, you just see them swimming by, swimming by. It's really cool. Um, yeah, so a couple of thousand fish a day really is a lot on a small river like the Vedder. Things start to taper off again. By the end of October, you only have, again, two, three hundred new fish showing up every day. But, so end of October, November, uh, the chums start to show up in strong numbers and, you know, you start to get into more chum than coho. But, uh, because of all these October fish are in the river, there are still quite a few coho left. So in November, even though we have very few fresh fish coming in, there are a ton of fish in the system already. And so if you're into catch and release, you don't mind those darker fish a little bit, uh, which, you know, I don't really like them that much. So usually November, first week of November or so, I kind of stop fishing for coho. I stop targeting them because at that point, usually I have enough in the freezer for the whole year anyway. So I kind of stopped going after them. I, I, I personally, I'm not a catch and release fisherman. I'm, I'm more of a harvest my food kind of fisherman. So anyway, that's not what this video is about. I, I tend to digress if you've noticed. So yeah, November, you still get new fish coming up, but it's again, sort of tapers off to maybe 50, maybe 100 fish per day entering the river. And the last, new fish I would say show up around Christmas. There may be a few outlier fish again like really late showing up in January, February but that time of year I don't swim the river so I don't really see them you know and, and when fish are that sparse um, I, I, you, you can't sort of gauge numbers just by fishing alone. At that time everybody's chasing steelhead targeting slightly different water anyway but at January February definitely on the upper you still see a lot of coho spawning up there so those fish that came up in late November and December they're still in the river and they're spawning in the upper and all the little creeks up there so yeah uh, all the way into February so yeah that's got the seven months of coho covered I hope you learned something um, I, I was gonna add also you know during that whole run you get little blips superimposed. You get those days when there are extra fish. And those are caused by two things. Heavy rains, so when the water comes up, and then as it starts to drop, all the fish that are staging down in the, in the Fraser and all the fish that have been kind of holding in the pools in the lower, they start to travel up. So the maybe two, three days after a big heavy rain, as the water's dropping, you get these huge pulses of fish coming up. So those are sort of superimposed on top of that gradual curve of fish. And the other thing that does it are large tides. So we have large tides on the new moon and on the full moon. And the ocean fish are using those large tides to travel up the Fraser River and all the way into the Vedder. So you get those two things together. So, you know, sometimes the stars align and you get a bit of a rain and you get a full moon and the big tides and it's mid to late October and, and you can get some pretty amazing days on the Vedder where you know you just you, you limit out in an hour and it's crazy and everybody's catching fish um, that's what keeps it exciting so my next video 
I'm going to probably cover gear a bit. So we're going to talk about rods, reels, and other equipment for catching coho. You have to bear with me in fishing season. It's really hard for me to take the time out to do videos and edit them and all that. So the videos will be basic and simple and quick so that I still have time to fish. Thanks for watching. See you next time.